Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem four from the fall 2021 Math 302 final exam here at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, this problem has two parts. First part, we're just stating some definitions. Uh, prime and maximal ideal. This should be pretty easy, right? So let's see, how about the definition of a prime ideal? So uh, as uh, usual, we'll be working everywhere here in some commutative ring with identity. It's not that we need that. It's just that's what we've been using all semester, and we're not going to vary it too much right now. Uh, so uh, what does it mean to be a prime ideal? So an ideal, well, let's call it P uh, of R, is prime. If what? Well, it should have something to do with uh, Euclid's lemma, right? That's uh, that's kind of the the um, the higher level version of prime, right? So we have actually a few ways of writing this down, but we'll start with our the the definition that we gave in class. So if whenever a and b are ideals of R such that, well, we'd like to say something like P divides AB, and we can do that by just saying, okay, whenever AB is a subset of P, right? So such that AB is a subset of P, or equivalently, right, P divides AB. Okay, again, we're using our definition of divisibility being equivalent to subset containment. Okay, so if this happens, then we want P to divide A or P to divide B, or in terms of subsets, A is a subset of P, or B is a subset of P. So P, P divides A, or P divides B. All right, so that's what we mean by a prime ideal. All right, how about a maximal ideal? Well, let's give a new name now, an ideal, oh, how about M of R, is maximal. Well, this is uh, pretty much in line with the, what the word maximal is going to mean. It should be somehow the biggest one, right? Now, of course, the biggest ideal inside R is R itself. But that's just too boring, right? <laughs> we don't want to talk about R. So the ideal M needs to be a proper ideal, okay? Um, and uh, and then there shouldn't be anything bigger than it, right? So maybe we even will stick that in here, right? So if M is a proper subset of R, and if whenever, okay, we'll just stick some ideal in between. So A is an ideal of R, um, yep, such that M is contained in A, is contained in R. Okay, so if we had some ideal that was in between, then, well, if we want M to be maximal, there shouldn't be such an A. So either A is already M, so A is equal to M, or, or A is already the entire ring, so A is equal to R. Okay, so that's our definition of, of maximal, right? pictorially wise, right? You have R and you have M, and you're not supposed to be able to fit anything in between, right? So having an A here shouldn't be possible if M is maximal, okay? So if, if this is, if there is such something in between, right, then M would be not maximal. Maybe A would be maximal, or maybe there's even something in between. But as soon as you find something where there's nothing in between that ideal and R, boom, you found your maximal ideal. Okay, how about B? Let's see, it says, recall that in Z, the integers, every prime ideal is of the form PZ, where P is a prime number. Hey, that's kind of convenient, right? Um, this is actually not 100% true. Um, the zero ideal is also a prime ideal. 
Uh, and and that's not actually going to be a maximal ideal. So we actually need to correct the statement here. Okay? So it's every non-zero prime ideal is of the form PZ where P is prime. And every non-zero prime ideal is a maximal ideal. Okay, so just a little correction there. All right, so we know that normally every maximal ideal is a prime ideal, but not every prime ideal is a maximal ideal. But in the integers, that actually is going to be true. All right, so how are we going to prove that? Well, okay, we get to assume we have a prime ideal, and we want to show that it is a maximal ideal. Okay, fine, but we know every prime ideal is of the form PZ, and in fact, we know every ideal in Z is a principal ideal, right? It'll be of the form MZ for some M. All right, so we're going to let P in Z be prime. And we will show that PZ is maximal. Okay, fine. So to show that something is maximal, we assume that there is something in between, and then we're going to show that it's either the one beneath or the one above. So assume, well, I could say assume A is an ideal of Z such that uh, A contains P. All right, or PZ. Um, but I actually, again, know that every ideal in Z is principal. So instead of writing curly A, how about I do a principal ideal generated by A? Okay, so assume A is an ideal in Z such that, right, or I'll, I'll use the same notation as above, AZ. Okay, that's an ideal. Uh, such that PZ is contained in A, Z, is contained in Z. All right. Now, because P, Z is contained in A, Z, and P is certainly an element of P, Z, right? You can write P as P times 1. Then we conclude that P is an element of A, Z, which tells me that I can write P as A times something. So this implies there exists, say, some u in z, such that p is equal to a u. Ah, but p is prime, and I've just written it as a product. So since p is prime, and I've written it as a product, I know one of the factors is a unit. Since p is prime, a or u is a unit. Okay, so there's two cases, right? So what if A is a unit? Well, if A is a unit, then you're looking at the ideal generated by a unit, and that's the entire ring. So AZ is equal to Z. Okay, well, what if U is a unit? If U is a unit, well, I've written here P equals AU, but U is a unit. So it has an inverse, and I could multiply by u inverse. And that would give me that p u inverse equals a u u inverse. But u u inverse is 1, so I just get a. Ah, this shows me that a is a multiple of p. So this means that a is in p z. But p z is an ideal. Well, why is that useful? Well, we know that ideals are closed under multiplication by elements in the ring, right? They absorb, in this case, Z multiplication. So not only is A in PZ, but any multiple of A is in PZ. In particular, AZ is a subset of PZ. But we already knew that PZ was a subset of AZ. And therefore, PZ and AZ are equal. So there are two situations. 
Either A is a unit or U is a unit. And in the first situation, we get that AZ is the entire ring. And in the second situation, we get that AZ is equal to PZ. And that is precisely what we're looking for in order to show that an ideal is maximal. So we have just concluded that PZ is maximal. And there's our proof. All right, excellent. We'll see everybody next time.